medical dilemma. Welcome back to Medical Dilemma. Again, I'd like to cite our major sponsors, Makati Medical Center, uh, St. Clair's Medical Center in Palanan, Makati, LifeQuest Training and Consultancy Corporation, and its partner, Manila Workshops. Now, uh, joining us for this third segment is another guest, okay, uh, Dr. Pura Rodriguez Caisip, Medical Director of the Hospital of the Infant Smile. Jesus. Uh, welcome to the show, Dr. Rodriguez Caisip. Thank you, thank you. Yes. For letting me in. <laughs> of course, anytime. Most welcome, Dr. Now, uh, Dr. Sanchez, before I uh, interrupted you so suddenly earlier, uh, you were mentioning something about conscientious uh, objection. Could you yes. uh, clarify this issue? Uh, there is really such a term. And I remember way back, several episodes ago, we talked about pulling the plug with somebody who is terminally ill and mm -hmm. who desires yes. to die with dignity, right? Mm -hmm. And we don't know who is supposed to pull the plug. And it, it ended with the fact that it was really the duty of a doctor, the doctor to pull the plug. But then if he asked somebody or delegates it to somebody else, like a relative or a co-doctor, then that would be allowed because of what we call conscientious objection. Mm -hmm. Because doctors have their principles also. Sometimes they do not believe that they should end or remove the plug. And so they defer that to another. And same here mm -hmm. also. Uh, with these RH bill, mm -hmm. we have such people, they recognize such people as conscientious objectors. But they have to report to the DOH about it. May we ask uh, our medical director, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Rapura Kaisip, what, is, what he thinks about it? is a um, conscientious objection. I, I have you have uh, received already a memo from the DOH? No, surprisingly we have not received any circular no, to mm -hmm. that effect and I think um, being a general hospital that we have, the hospital of the infant Jesus, we should have one so that everybody, all the OBGYNs in the department mm -hmm. will know about it no? because guess. most of them are I believe are conscientious objectors, if oh. that is the term. Mm -hmm. I think it's a very, very nice term for being an obje uh, objector. It's, you are conscientious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that means uh, these doctors uh, do not uh, believe in giving contraceptives yes, or yes. Uh, doing tubal ligation or whatnot. Yeah, the, in your the, hospital, the, doctor. We do have uh, contraception. Anything that will prevent a pregnancy is mm -hmm. a contraceptive method, no? But uh, we. Do not, I think we do not do tubal ligation mm -hmm. or um, some of the members will not give the pill, okay. um, mm -hmm. but they will talk with the patients first about the natural method, about how not to get pregnant, because if you know how to get pregnant, you should know how not to get pregnant, mm -hmm. and it will be part of education. Mm -hmm. And I think... Um, based on my little experience of 45 years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's not very good. <laughs> I've been able to talk to a lot of couples. It involves a couple. No, yes. You don't just blame the woman for getting pregnant. Mm. She will never get pregnant without the man, of course. <laughs> of course. And so I've been able to help a lot of couples decide for themselves what is best for them, mm. between them, you know. Yes. And, uh, they don't really have to have a tubal ligation or you know, to the drastic uh, mm -hmm. ways of uh, contraceptive. Mm -hmm. And I still have these couples with me. In fact, they become my friends. And they they have completed their families. If they decided to have two, only two. Four? Mm -hmm. Only four. No? They've been successful. And I told them, okay, let's do it, the ripple effect. Teach the others how to do it. Mm -hmm. Because I cannot reach all of you. And you will be the role model since they see that uh, it's effective on you, maybe it could be effective for us. Mm -hmm. you, so, know, you know, Sunny, so, mm -hmm. the RH bill went through several changes, no? True. Uh, and I knew you were very active before in, yes. uh, in this. Can you tell us more or less what was the old version? Because the new one seems to be unrecognizable already. <laughs> well, the, <laughs> the RH bill that we used to talk about in the school, mm -hmm. um, they used to assign me to that whenever it, uh, it is on the bill. They will give that topic to me in the community because I've been with preventive medicine for so long mm -hmm. and uh, I like to, to help people out of some predicament. Maybe you call it the dilemma. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting MD, medical dilemma. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
and uh, we've been quite vocal about our uh, idea not to do the drastic methods of contraception, like the tubal ligation, which is so, yes. you know, so definitive. No? Yes, yeah, more or less. and some, quite a number of people actually, the men especially, they didn't even know how it's done. The vasectomy, but when you explain everything to them, you educate them about it. Ah, ganun mo pala. Ay, mag-iisip muna po kami. No? But these are so, married couples already. Married couples. Uh -huh. Now, for those unmarried, well, actually, do not tolerate as much as possible because we are in the Catholic University. You know, we've been yes. trained so, and we try to advise them on what not to do as yet, and then what to do when the time comes. So it's, uh, I think, it's more of education and really helping them to understand what the bill is all about. That's why a lot of people, probably a lot of us, did not understand what it was all about. The rationale for it. Now, I think they really mean well. The thing is, um, the way we understood it, you know, uh, two people might uh, have the same ideas, but they don't accept it as the same thing, you see. So, so the, the, the objectives are also. the same, but yes. the methods of reaching the objectives are may different. Not, yes, correct. No, Doctor is also connected with the University of Santo Tomas, mm -hmm. and that's where she teaches this uh, part of his okay. ethics. <laughs> ah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, going so, back to the uh, the logic of uh, conscientious objection, I'm just wondering you know, what is the logic behind that. If you're the objector, you're obliged to report yourself as an objector. So it's like. You sound like you're the exception to the norm. So <laughs> yes, I'm not be Father the way, no? <laughs> But uh, yeah, but that means they respect your uh, beliefs also. Likewise, as a practitioner, if you feel that it is against your religious mm -hmm. your religion mm -hmm. to be handing out contraceptions right and left or doing to ligation, they respect that. However, there are certain rules that are going to be established. I think later on they will announce it that you have to report to the DOH okay. that as an institution, you are objecting you are, uh, as, an institution, as an institution, but you must have a valid reason mm -hmm. uh, for being that. And being run by a Catholic priest, of course, that's valid. No? And then if you are an ob per se, you should put thou in your clinic at the door, what are you objecting to? I don't do to by legation, but I offer contraceptive services like that. Or maybe you really don't have to put it in blatant uh, ad like, like but that's what, what, what the law says. <laughs> <laughs> now, I th they will be very clear about it. It yeah. is required. Like the oh. BIR, but they tell us oh. we should put, there put a menu. The BIR. <laughs> <laughs> so they, might, they are demanding this. And it will be Phil Health who will monitor us. It's good there was one provision there, attorney, what do you think? There was one provision there that said that uh, it limited only these uh, pro bono services to those who are involved in this, yeah, and that is usually the OB, the midwife, the nurse, no? Is that not against equal protection clause? That's why I think they remove it. Uh, okay, I haven't read that uh, particular mm -hmm. ruling of the Supreme Court on the uh -huh. provisions that it objected to or mm -hmm. it declared unconstitutional, but mm -hmm. uh, that, that violates the principle of um, equal protection, definitely, yeah. because so you're, you're, you're piling on an obligation or giving special treatment to, say, the least not, to a certain class of people and not applying it in general to yeah. so everyone who Imagine uh, if only, only the OB and the nurse and the midwife mm -hmm. can, can, will have to do 48 hour service pro bono, and I think they need to move that. Uh, it's not fair. To the pro bono, the pro service bono requirement of for lawyers. The, so that was, yeah. Yes, that so was the, uh, among lawyers, the, it's mandatory for all, right, to give pro to bono, render, yeah, yes, pro, pro bono sure. service. What is but the status of the RH law right now? Ah, it's already it's a law. Already a it's law. a law. It's no longer really. a bill. It's already mm -hmm. a but law. But there were provisions that were declared unconstitutional by oh, the yeah. Supreme Because there was a something TRO, like eight, something like that. Uh, eight uh, provisions that have been yeah. declared Plenty. unconstitutional. <laughs> That's why it's very good that there were people like Dr. Pura who really were active, like Father. They mm -hmm. were active in uh, going against the, the original provisions, which were really unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so I guess the uh, the current RH law we would say is a acceptable compromise to the debate. Well, it may, well, it may law, because at so. least, <laughs> yeah. but it allows but some it, doctors yes, to. Yes, uh, and uh, mm -hmm. I don't know is that the circumvention is a term that is uh, useful, no? To circumvent. So because yeah. <laughs> because what I have in mind, like when I came at first, I I didn't want to come. 
<laughs> Number two is, I couldn't refuse a friend. So I felt guilty. So I said, yes, sa totoo lang talagang we were so busy with uh, some yeah, other things. But the thing is, I thought, uh, putting, f uh, well, kidding aside, you know, I thought that this is a very good opportunity for us in health education, in medical practice, to, to give our moral and social support to these people. Because this is one way of reaching them and, and teaching them and educating them, helping them. Because most of the time they're in a, in a problem, in a mess actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, they don't know any better. Or they might go to somebody else who will advise them you know, something not good. Mm -hmm. So might as well take this opportunity to help. No? Right. Because I have had the experience also of doing this and it turned out so well. No? One wanted a, 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 an abortion mm -hmm. when I told him that we don't do that for the yes, reason that we, we are Catholics, we don't mm -hmm. kill. Yes, okay. yes. And he said, okay doctor, if you do not do it, tell me who can do it. Mm -hmm. And he said, money is not a problem. <laughs> oh. Really, huh? Well, Dr. I'm afraid uh, we've run out of time, even though I know there's still a lot of questions to ask. Uh, but maybe uh, before we really end the show, let's have a few parting words from each of you. Yeah. Okay. Maybe um, we can start with Attorney Sara. Uh, okay. Um, maybe we will reserve discussion for our H. Loata later yeah, episode. Uh, maybe uh, another episode. Dilemma, yes. 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 But uh, as usual, I'd like to invite everyone to watch Medical Dilemma every Sundays right here on GNN 6 to 7 p.m. And we have replaced. And replaced um, Mondays, Mondays, 11 a.m. Yes. Okay. Dr. Aifuro? Thank you very much for um, inviting me here in Medical Dilemma. And then, as a parting words, uh, as much as possible, those teenagers who got pregnant, please see your doctor uh, immediately. And better not to get pregnant while you're a teenager. You have to study. Okay. <laughs> Finish okay. your course. Okay. Yes. Dr. Kaisi? Well... Pregnant or not pregnant, I think the women should know uh, when to come to the doctor. When you know, you don't have to be pregnant to come to the doctor, actually. And uh, for the young ones who have problems, come to us. Mm -hmm. I think we can be of a lot of help up to them. Thank you so much, Dr. Yeah. Dr. Sanchez. You know, on, on hindsight, mm -hmm. I'm very happy that there were those who were conscientious enough and active enough to make amendments, to try to reform mm -hmm. the old uh, version of the RH bill, because as it is now, at least it's more acceptable, I think, to society. Mm -hmm. We will go to that once it has already been completed. Uh, fine tuning has been mm -hmm. done already by the DOH. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Sanchez. Now, the family plays an important role in promoting a healthy and enjoyable teenage life. But a mistake can happen and lead to teenage pregnancy. Rather than find out who committed the mistake and why, it certainly is more important to give the care, support, and love that a teenage mother and her child definitely deserve. Thank you for watching this episode of Medical Dilemma. If you would like to send questions, comments, or suggestions, please email them to heavenlycrestproductions at gmail.com. Watch us again next week, 6 p.m. here on GNN, this time for a look at the big C or cancer in women. You can also catch us every Monday from 11 a.m. to 12 noon. Uh, always remember, help patients and families in crisis. Be aware and show you care. Have an enlightened week ahead of you. Medical Dilemma 